Hello friends. So today in this video, we can discuss the first three problems from the lead code weekly contest 253. So let's start. The first problem is not too difficult. It states that check if the string is the prefix of array. So you are given words as you can see here and you are also given a string s and just have to check that even like after concatenating first k characters of this word array, can you form this s string? What I mean by this is, let's assume that you have some array like A, A, B, A, B, C, D, so on. And you have some string, which is, let's assume A, A, B, A, C, D. So as you can see, you can take the first three words from this whole array and you can concatenate them and you can form this whole string S. So you just have to check that after concatenating some characters from this whole array, which is somewhat a, can you form this string s? Now what you can easily do here is just keep on concatenating the characters from this whole array and just at each step, check that whether s is formed. If s is formed in this whole process, then the answer is true, else the answer is false. So that's the whole logic for this problem. As you can see, we have to go to the code. Uh, we have taken an empty string s, iterate over all the words in the vector words and concatenate each word to the string answer and at each point if the answer becomes equal to s then the answer is true else the answer is false okay so that that's not a difficult problem let's move on to the next problem the next problem is remove stones to minimize the total so it actually states that you are given an array of piles as you can see you are actually given an array of piles and you're also given k, which means how many operations you can do. In each operation, what you can do, you can take out, like you can choose any pile. And from each pile, what you can do, you can take out floor of piles of i divided by two stones from it. What it actually means that, uh, let's assume that you have, uh, just delete this out. So let's assume that you have uh, seven stones. Then seven divided by two, which is equal to, uh, like you have to find out the floor of it. So it is equal to 3.5 and the floor of it is equal to three. Now you have to take out three stones from seven. So seven minus three, which is equal to four, which is eventually means that you have to find out actually the seal of seven divided by two, the seal of seven divided by two is equal to four. Okay. So what you can easily see here is that you are given some pile of array, which is like five, nine, and maybe uh, four. And you have to keep on taking out some elements such that you, you just use out one element and take out like floor of that number divided by two stones from it, such that that new number is seal of five divided by two if you take out from this part. Now what you can easily see here is that after this, the new array will be sort of like three, nine and four. Because you have taken out this number of stones, which is like two. So if you have taken two stones from five, number of remaining stones is three. Okay. So you have to do this operation K times. And after that, you have to tell that how many, what is the minimum total score? Okay. So what you can easily see here is if I have a pile, let's assume that just delete out this part. If I have a pile of seven and I have a pile of two. Okay. Now if you divide this pile by two and same divide this pile by two, what you can get that if I divide this pile by two, I get a total of four in the end because I will de delete three from this seven. And in this, if I divide two by divide by two, I will get one. So in this, if I choose seven as a number, I will like subtract three from the total score. Why? Because see, I am deleting out three stones from this whole array. If I have some array, if I choose seven and I have two in that array, if I choose seven, I will be removing three stones and the new array will be like this four and two. If I choose two, then it will be seven and one, the new array. So now what you can easily see here is that choosing seven will actually remove three stones, which is beneficial. So choosing the number, which is the maximum among this whole array 
choosing every time the maximum number in the whole array is always beneficial. So what you can easily do here is the easiest way to do this problem is using a priority queue. Priority queue. So it actually stores the element in such a way that the first element in the queue is always the maximum. And it actually do the operation of insertion and removal in log of n time. So that's also fast enough. So what you can do here is just maintain a priority queue and at each step, take out the top element from the priority queue, which is the maximum element. Divide that number by two and insert that number again in the priority queue. So what we're taking out the, the maximum element from the priority queue, dividing that number by two and again inserting. And you have to do this k times. And after that, the priority queue will only consist of only those elements, which are like transformed. You just have to do the total of all those elements and that's the answer. So I hope you get the point. So this is the code. Uh, we'll first push all the elements in the priority queue. This is just how we can make a priority queue. Then we'll do this operation k times in each operation. We'll pop out the top element from the priority queue, which is the maximum among, among this whole array. Okay. We'll pop it out. Then divide that by two. If it is even divided by two, if it is odd, we have to find out its floor or actually the seal. Sorry. So this is how I'm finding out the seal. And then I'm inserting that element back into the priority queue. In the end, we have to find out the total among all the elements in the priority queue. And that's our total answer. Let's move on to the last problem uh, in this video. As you can see, the last problem is find out the minimum number of swaps to make the string balance. So as you can see in this, you are given a string S and you are given that a balance string or is a string in which so the you are given some open brackets and some close brackets a balance string is if the string is empty or the string is balanced if they have an equal number of opening and closing brackets such that they are balanced somehow. so i hope you get the intuition like what is a balance sequence if it is like this some opening brackets and each opening brackets closes the uh, closing bracket. So this is a balance sequence. Now you are given some sequence in which maybe some part is balanced, some part is not balanced, like this. Now what you can see here is you can swap out. The problem states that you have equal number of opening brackets and equal number of closing brackets, which means that you can eventually form a balance sequence by this process. In each step, what you can do, you can swap two brackets. If I can like swap this out, then if you can take this and put it here, it will become like this and just put the remaining parts. And as you can see, it becomes the balance string. So what you can see here is you have to find out the minimum number of swaps you have to do to make this whole string balance. Now, what you can easily understand from this example is that there is some part in the string, which is already balanced as you can see maybe uh, this part maybe the string has somewhat this then it has some balance part and maybe like this then it has some unbalanced part so we don't care about the unbalanced part like sorry the balance part so just remove out from this whole string we just care about only the unbalanced part if we just take out only the unbalanced part it actually forms a string like this like this. Okay. So it actually forms a string like this. I can draw it out like this. So it actually forms a string like this. Now what you can easily see here is that in this string, my main motto is if I swap two letters, let's assume that if I swap this and this, what will happen? As you can see in one swap, I can form two pairs. Okay. So because if I find out how many numbers are opening brackets and closing brackets are there in the end after removing out all the, so these are the mis mismatched pairs. Okay. So how many mismatched pairs are there? If they are even mismatched pairs, then the answer is like just total number of pairs divided by two. If they're odd mismatched pairs, then plus one divided by two. Why? Maybe if I, if I have only one mismatch pair like this, which is like one pair, one pair divided by two is equal to zero. 
So answer should be one. So just one plus one divided by two, which is like two. Sorry, one. So which means that the total is total number of mismatched pairs, mismatched pairs plus one divided by two. That's the answer. Now how to find out this mismatched pairs? You can easily do that. You can use a st uh, stack or you can just use a, a, a counting variable. Whenever you find out an opening bracket, just increment the total variable or total counting variable. Whenever you find out a closing bracket, decrease this total variable. And whenever this total variable goes less than zero, it means that at that point you have a mismatch. So maybe you have some opening brackets, then you have some closing brackets. So when you hit this point, you are increment total by one. At this point, the total will become two. At this point, the total will become again subtracted by one, which so it becomes one again. At this point, uh, subtracted by one, it becomes zero again. Maybe it has again like this. At this point, it becomes minus one. It means that this is a mismatch pair. Like I found the first mismatch. At the first mismatch, the total number of swaps it will require will find out a total number of mismatch divided by two. Total mismatch plus one divided by two. That's the total answer. So I hope you get the intuition part of this. So I'll take on the code part now. Uh, so there are a mismatch variable, the size and the balance. The balance is the total. We will iterate over the whole string. If it's opening, increase the balance. If it's like a closing a bracket, decrease the balance. If at any point balance becomes less than zero, then the answer is at that point, the mismatch will increase by one. And we'll just make our balance equal to zero because we have found out more than one mismatch. And the answer in the total uh, final answer is mismatch plus one divided by two. Okay. I hope you understand the logic and the code part for this whole three problems. If you still have any doubts, you can mention down in the comment box. I will see you next one until I keep coding and bye.